Welcome to another broadcast of The Soul of the Everyman on the Artist First Radio Network. All past shows are archived. You can find them in podcast form. Visit artistfirst.com. Want to send a question or a comment? Hit us up at dj at artistfirst.com. Now here's your hosts. We call them the wise ones, Michael and Margaret Lines. Damn it all. Hi, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> Um, this is gonna, we're just going to have solid profanity for an hour. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> keep, keep it up. Um, uh, uh, well, uh, welcome to the soul of the everyman, where we're not going to have solid profanity for an hour. <laughs> we'll limit it to 45 minutes, uh, and then we'll have a break. Uh, anyway, I am Michael Lyons. <laughs> and I'm Margaret. <laughs> and we are the profane ones. <laughs> Wise ones are out tonight, uh, and, and because it's it's cold as a witch's blank, <laughs> mm-hmm. and it, and here in the in the in the just south of the Arctic Circle, also known as New, as New Jersey, um, we are having a little bit of a cold snap, but we are going to get through it. We always do. You and uh, tonight's show um, is as I think going to be an interesting one because tonight we are going to. Def- Fine God. Oh dear. It's going to take 47 minutes. And the last 13 minutes will be profanity. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the other way around, dear. Oh, right. We're going to sprinkle the profanity all the way through. Uh, <laughs> anyway, God. No, okay. Uh, we are going to define God. <laughs> oh, Lordy. <laughs> no, we're not going to even try. Um, in fact, uh, we're going to beg the question, and I'm going to just say it right up front. We are not going to define God, but we're going to. Um, we 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 kind of came upon this topic because it, it is it is a constant um, pursuit of people to both mentally or conceptually define God. So if you ask somebody, how do you define God, you'll get all the gibbering, gibbly gook that they can think of to try and define God. And then the other half of this sort of, or maybe it's the other third of this this question, is that if you really want to see how people define God, just look at their actions and don't ask them any questions whatsoever, (laughs) because the, the... the, what a person spends their time on, or what a person uh, values, is what you know is "quote unquote" truly, you know, what they're worshiping or what their what their God is. But um, before we go too far down, you know, that rabbit, rabbit hole, hole. That's the rabbit hole. Um, we have put up, or we will put up, or in some future femtosecond, there will be put up uh, a boss graphic, uh, a quote by. Um, uh, amazingly enough, Ayn Rand uh, about God because you know she was uh, known for lots of things, but one of them, God wasn't one of them. Uh, but it's a, but it's a great quote anyway, so we just went with it uh, because it, it makes the most sense. Um, basically, it says God is a being whose only definition is that He's beyond man's power, beyond our power to conceive. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so it really does, you know, Margaret, beg the question because. We've said in prior shows um, that, you know, as as limited beings with a limited existence, there is is no way that we could encompass an infinite, all powerful, all knowing being of any of, of any type whatsoever. We we can't our 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 inability to conceptualize God is is the best. Um, definition, because because there's no we're we're too small. <laughs> Your arms are too small to box with God. You're you're you we are too small to in any way encapsulate God. But we but we that doesn't stop us from trying. <laughs> no, that's true. <laughs> it's true because we want to have something out there that we can begin to learn about. Yes. And it's just as uh, when you watch a, a baby, they have to reach out and, and touch things and begin to experience what's going on before they can take the next step, which is, you know, whether they have to crawl or begin to sit up straight, support their body, or even begin to 
pull themselves up into a standing position. It is part of the way we learn as human beings. So even though God as a concept is in undefinable, that doesn't stop us from wanting to learn more about God. And it's rather interesting because there are so many different projections that man has come up with about who God is or what God is. Right. I think I want to actually want to back up a little bit to where you were before, which is not only, you know, um, as part of the stages of, of being, do you want to um, define God? I would say that it's almost a, a, um, uh, it's almost a compulsion. Mm-hmm. In, in other words, we, we want to define God because uh, we, feel, we feel better, we feel safer. Um, we, we often, uh, throughout all of human history, we have defined God as really aspects of who we are, which is not to say that God is who we are. What it is to say is that we see in ourselves a reflection of the infinite, and, and when we want to think about it, we want to think about it in terms of ourselves. So we anthropomorphize God, or we, we make God into some sort of very powerful being, which many cultures have made God into these powerful beings. Or we, we uh, associate God with things that are, are part of our physical universe or part of our, our physical environment. You know, you see it in uh, you know, those who... Have, who see God in nature, or they see God in, in animals, or in um, very powerful aspects of, of their environment. Uh, and, but each one of these things is, is, a, is a concept or a reflection, which, which we are compelled to do in order to do what we talked about some time back, which is we have to put God into a small enough box that we can carry it around. Or think about it, you know, and and it scares the heck out of us to realize that that box, no matter how big we make that box, we can't encompass that infinite. Right, and it's mostly because we need it to be relatable in some way, shape, or form, because that is how we function. We can't do anything unless there is something to guide our our selves, our perception, our concepts, our, our being, use that as the the center point, the origin. Mm. Origin point. And then you can begin to define where this may be. But it's also, you know, as you as you take a step into that direction and and agree that, you know, your mental conscience or your mental concept is limited, it's making room for expansion of the concept, expansion. And in those small steps, small expansions, you eventually get to a point where you can make space for something that you don't understand. Mm. Because your first inclination is not to make space at all for something that you don't understand. If anything, you want to just declare judgment over what you don't understand and say, you know, throw that out. That's wrong. That's absolutely wrong. It can't be that way. Right. Exclude rather than include. Right. And <clears throat> and that is a natural uh, mind response. And to overcome that, it's, un- it's allowing yourself to understand that there is always room for improvement of the concept. Some people want absolutes. They say, okay, this is the concept. This is absolutely what it's got to be. And you're like, there's nothing really absolute about that. There's so much that has not been taken into account. It's only an absolute if you, if you cut down on the dimensions of existence, the requirements of existence. If it's, if it's a straight line, then that's all you need. Right. Well, and you can, you know, there's two or three things there. One, of course, is um, 
we are limited so our by definition our concepts even even the most abstract are are limited um but then the other way of, maybe the more um the kinder way of looking about it is we, we are limited so we to to be in relationship with the, that which is infinite we must in some way make it less than infinite and i think the the expansion, the part that you were just talking about, about allowing for space, is that you have to allow yourself to come to the end of yourself and realize that you will never contain, and no concept you can conceive of will contain. And therefore, you have to say that I have, I have reached the end of what I can do and allow that there is more. And that's, that's a loneliness, and it's also a defeat of kind. You can look at it as a defeat of, of a kind. You can see, well, I... There is nothing that I can do to encompass the to make my to make myself understand this completely. So you have what to then you have to, have to you have to give up this mental idea. This you have to allow yourself to be defeated because the the mind wants to win or to lose. But the the true the truth of it is is you have to allow yourself to say I, I'm not winning. I'm not losing. I am just allowing that I can't. I'm, I, the, the defeat part of it, if you will, is to say, realize that you have a boundary, which you, n- there's no way you can exceed it in order to encompass this, which, that which is infinite. So, so, but the defeat, the word defeat itself implies a, a battle of some kind. I think it, in many people see it as a battle. I'm not, I'm not saying that it is one. I'm saying that people see it as a, a struggle to define God. Uh, you know, and and they spend as we, we started the the show with, it's sort of a, a compulsion or a um, it's a constant conceit that you want to put God into a box and carry it around, and we see it in many 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 different concepts and religions and so on. Right, but I don't I don't necessarily agree that it's a it's a battle to understand the defeat because defeat has that. A connotation. To call it a struggle, then um, you can I, lose a struggle. I think many people war war with the concept of God, and they do battle with it. And yeah, but who, they're battling themselves. Exactly, but and and you said it to start with, and I just want to go back. Is it, it you 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 basically said that they're, um, you know that they're. Uh, that they're unable to um, allow that God is is beyond them, and so they reject it all. the 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 first con- The first concept is if I don't understand it, it's got to be wrong. <laughs> well, what you're battling at what you're battling at that point is your own fear. Yes, I I I, I think we're in, in full agreement. What I'm trying to say is that is that that initially they say. God has to fit in here, and if it doesn't fit in here, it's it's wrong because my concept has to be right, the absolutes. And if you if you grow it even to the point where you say, well, you allow that that you know God, my God fits in here, but your God might fit into that one. You know, it's okay. I have my own. You have your own. And and you if you the 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 most mature uh, is to say no. N- there's no way given everything that all the people on earth and everything we know that we can fit God into any as many boxes as we want to create it still doesn't fit and then you have to I, I say defeated but I think you just have to give up the the conceit that you will ever be able to and that's the most the most mature way of, of trying to um, get past yourself past this uh, you know, everyone else is wrong and I'm right. <laughs> well, my that, that is a, a power thing, but that's... Yeah. My, my point being is that if you're constantly trying to fit God into a box, a construct, you have to... And, and you realize that God is infinite. It's outside any, any concept you can possibly think of. That that in itself is a dichotomy. Yes. So, if you're still struggling, realizing you, that God is 
infinite, but you still insist on putting him in a box, what is motivating you? Why are you doing it? Because it means that something is driving you that you're not conscious of. We can we can explore motives of why people do it. I think um, we struck a one, upon one earlier, which is uh, fear. You know, you 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 fear the um, the unknowable because this isn't just vast beyond comprehension. This is beyond the concept of vast. It, it, there's no way to even encompass the degree to which we can't know God. Right. <laughs> you know, so. Uh, the the vastness of our inability is more infinite than uh, is less infinite than God Himself, if you know what I mean. Well, yeah, but that's <laughs> but that's the difference between what you think and and what your heart feels. And 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 that's a great. If we could stop there for a second, that's you said dichotomy. That's the real dichotomy. Is I think much of the effort to encapsulate God is think effort. Mm -hmm. We want to think about God and we want to realize, you know, and, and put him in the thinking box. You know, the, the mind is an amazing organ. You know, we, and it's an amazing thing that it can try and, con and conceptualize the whole universe when we try all the time. Uh, and we think God's got to be in there somewhere. Well, no. But where can we hold God completely is in the non-mind of the heart. And, and the heart doesn't care whether it has the, the smallest part of God that can be ever th thought about or, the, or all of God. The heart doesn't care. The heart's about relationship. Mm -hmm. And yes, to have a relationship with God, we, we, we want to put a let's say, a face on what we think God is. But if you're in the heart, it's just a vehicle. It's just a way of, of making it relatable and relationshipable. But it isn't something that you have to try and hold. You just want to be in relation. When, when you're in relationship with another person, you aren't owning them. You don't know every piece of them. You don't, you don't have them in a box. Let's hope not that you don't put your relationships in a box, people. Just saying. Uh, so, it's it's a relationship where you're trading energy. You're 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 loving that other, and love is something that you can't hold in a box. Love has to move. Love has to to flow. Uh, love has to grow. Love has to grow. And, and you, can't, you cannot place that in a box. Anything that is living cannot be placed. In a stagnant spot or a limited spot, it will outgrow it just by by life. By life, love has to grow. Love, love has to move. Um, so, the heart is where you can uh, find God and not have to worry about whether you've got all of Him. Well, I, <laughs> I think it's interesting because whenever someone is really in trouble. <clears throat> and I mean real trouble. Mm. So completely outside your your able your ability to control your situation. Um and you need help, you need strength. Your concept of God doesn't work. You know, especially if you uh believe it if you do certain things then God is supposed to respond a certain way. Right, you know, like you put you put the quarter in and you turn the crank and out comes your gumball. It's like, but I want a gumball. We'll get you one later. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but please go right ahead. You're right. But when your concept of God is like, okay, you go do these things, whether it's ceremony, whether it's some sort of pact or agreement that you believe you've formed. And it doesn't happen. It forces you into another space where it's like, well, this is not who I thought this was. And my question always is, can you actually have a relationship with a thought concept? 
this image that you, you've cobbled together. And relationships do not come from, you know, checking the box on all the qualities that you want your significant other to have. A relationship is a heart-to-heart. And when a heart connects up to another heart, in unconditional love, then all that other stuff really goes by the wayside. And it's the relationship, it's the communication, heart to heart, the growth, the love that sustains you when you are in situations that are out of your control. Let, let, let me go back a little bit because I think there was something very significant right in the beginning of that. You said that when people are um, when people are in trouble and they're using what the mental concept of of God, whatever it is, you know, as you said, um, there's a ritual or uh, um, you know, there's a, some sort of a if I do this, so some sort of a, like a quid pro quo, you know, if I do this, I'll get that. Um, those, those boxes, because that's what those are, those boxes are, are fine when you're not in trouble because it doesn't matter. It, it's not important to you at that moment whether, whether if I do this, I get that. Because the this and the that are, you know, just almost just things that you're filling in, like you were saying, checking the boxes, doing the checking the boxes. When it matters to you, when 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 it becomes existential, you know that your your very life or something which is as precious to you as life is um, under assault, and what you're looking to your your concept of God for is is some sort of a of a, a relief or some sort of a, a rescue, and the formula that you have put the box that you have put your God in is supposed to provide that right. you know, part of your, of your ritual, your formulaic ritual was that if I press button a and turn knob B, that something good will happen, you know? And, and as you said, that mental construct is insufficient to hold God and it's fragile because it's just a, just a small little glass box that if you don't play with it in the, just the right way, it's going, to, it's going to break. It's going to shatter. And what happens to people in these situations where their, their concepts of God, which are mental little boxes, don't work, They're, they are shattered. Right. Um, we, we saw it many times, and you can see it in many examples in life where, where, people, where people have a... They say it's a it's a faith in in a in a being a divine being a, and they say I have a relationship, but what they really have is more like a box, and when the box breaks, they feel two things: they feel um, betrayed, mm-hmm. and they feel almost cheated, and they shatter their their self concept shatters, and they don't know what to do now. The the converse of that is the heart. You know, if if the relationship is built on the heart, let's just talk person to person, not you to God, but person to person. Uh, the relationship built on the heart, it outlives all trouble. It it survives death itself. That relationship isn't bound in a box. The body is bound in a box. The body is lowered into the ground in death. But the relationship of the heart carries on it carries on it's infinite that this is where you break the you know where you put the two into two where they diverge the mental concept is the beginning yes in the beginning when you are uh learning about the infinite you need these boxes you you build step by step but when you realize that the boxes won't contain what you what you feel what your heart says you have to you have to go past it to have a real relationship with a person you have to go past it yet again to have a real relationship with that which is infinite. Your relationship is your being to another being. It's not 
always feeling. Most people confuse that. Feelings are, are part of who you are, but you are, you are more than that. Your being state is far more than that. You're not a thought. You're not in relationship with a thought, and nor are you in relationship with a feeling. But love is m- not a feeling, not, not the way we use the word love. It's been... Uh, cheapened. Yes, it's been... The, the word love has been cheapened by overuse and in many forms. Mm-hmm. But it's that unconditional love that has no boundaries including the boundary of death. That is your being state. Mm. That is the equivalent of the being state. Far more than a thought or a feeling. Which means that you are far more, far more than your thoughts and your feelings. Mm. I- exactly. And, and now we're getting back to our sort of our premise you know, God, a being whose only defe- definition is that he's beyond man's power to conceive. I think the, the key word here, well, there's two really, but the key word for me is, is conceive. The other one is power. Um, both power and conception are, are, are they're different, of course, but they're both mental constructs. Um, you know, conception, the very word conceive, is... It's a construction. It, it, it is. It is something that is made, something that is arrived at, something that you can play with and hold on to a concept. Um, and I think power is important here too, because what we would love to have the power to hold all that is the infinite. We, I think, we desire it mentally. And we eschew what we can actually do, which is to relate to it at the heart level. We, we, and we, we put this kind of shell over, oh, that's just feelings. That's just, you know, eh, it doesn't matter. You know, so you can't, what, what can you do with it? And we want to, in this quote, we want to talk about, you know, the power of human beings to conceive and, and to put ourselves in the position that we, we can know all things, you know, know. Again, know all things. Um, it, it's very mental and very, um, very much concerned with power, our own power. Well, I think the key word there is power. Um, conceive, though, I think is has got more to it, because when something is conceived, it's a seed that's planted, and it's the understanding that this needs to grow. What was planted. There's more to it than just the, sh- the kernel that you see when it goes in. There, there, that's a, that is a true con- um, connotation of the word conceive, I agree. Uh, if you look at it from that point of view, we shouldn't think that we could, we could ever understand what our conception will become. Mm-hmm. Uh, this, this, this takes the conception and takes it outside of the, of the, of the person, of the human being, and right. allows it to grow on its own. That, that's fine. Yeah, but. it has a life of its own. And the power, if you if you understand that, um, that power, that word power, as a human being, you want it to be your own power. Yeah. But the power is actually giving permission for the conception to occur. To allow your consciousness to receive a seed, and in receiving it, you allow it to germinate and allow it to grow into something far greater than what you could possibly imagine. Hmm. I mean, this is this is the this is the correct way. We could reinterpret the statement and 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 give it the that that sort of flow. Uh, but what we're going to do is leave this with you right now, and we're going to take a little break and go back to the studio, and you can conceive of God, and when you come back, um, let us know all about it. There is 
is a Reaper is the story of five-year-old Christopher Aaron and his life-changing struggle with leukemia. Winner of both the Indie Bragg Medallion as well as the reader's favorite silver medal for memoir, There is a Reaper has more than 100 Amazon book reviews and a five-star rating. It has been described as life-changing, spiritual, a must-read. Just released on Audible and iTunes, this memoir is also available in paperback and on Amazon Kindle for only 99 cents. Get your copy of this life-changing memoir today. The Timeless Esoterica Radio Program with Dr. Bruce is broadcast on the fourth Monday of every month at 8 p.m. Pacific, 11 p.m. Eastern on ArtistFirst.com. We explore topics including the paranormal, alien life, mysteries, conspiracies, hidden history, oddities, and much more. Each show will feature a special guest with exciting and thought-provoking discussion. Always keep an open mind, an open heart, live forever, and remember Dr. Bruce believes in you. Rick Rodan fans, love mythology with plenty of action and humor? Destroyer's Blood is for you. The new fantasy novel by award-winning author Michael Lines is book one of the adventures of Dev Kalian, the Blood series. Follow Dev and his magic sword betrayer as they are suddenly attacked and forced to return to Olympus to fight in a war they want no part in. The world of men and gods is about to be destroyed by Zeus's ancient foe, and only Dev and Trey can stop him. The conflict never stops, and the amazing twist will have you on the edge of your seat. Act now while the ebook is on sale for only 99 cents. Destroyer's Blood is available on Amazon.com, Barnes & Noble, iTunes, Kobo, and fine e-tailers everywhere. And while you're there, get the free prequel, It's in the Blood, available for a limited time. Hi, this is Minette Lauren, author of Race for the Sun. Do you believe in guardian angels? Check out book one of my Soul Watcher series. It can be found on Amazon.com or anywhere fine books are sold. Go to www.minettelauren.com and you are listening to the Artist First Radio Network. The Fat Man Gets Out of Bed is the latest book from Michael Lines, the award-winning author of There is a Reaper. Featuring 13 original stories, this wide-ranging collection has everything. Forbidden love, gods versus demigods, weird invading aliens, sexy seductive artificial intelligence, and unusual passion between the living and the dead. All set amidst fantastic worlds of pain and loss and boundless joy. From the sublime to the macabre to the bittersweet, The Fat Man Gets Out of Bed will leave you breathless with laughter, brimming with tears, trembling with suspense. Available now on Amazon.com, Google Play, iTunes, Kobo, and fine e-tailers everywhere. to the soul of the everyman on the Artist First Radio Network. Let's get back to your hosts, Michael and Margaret Lines. <laughs> Thank you very much, Z-Man. We are not the wise ones. Thank God. Oh, and that's what the show is about tonight, if you missed the first half hour. <laughs> okay. We, we are, we are, we have, we, we, you know, last half hour, folks, I know you, you come in at the, after the break sometimes, and we defined God, so you're going to have to go back and listen. Uh, it was awesome. <laughs> it was really awesome, though. I mean, it, 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 uh, I think it was a tour de force myself. Um, but uh, this half hour, um, we're not going to define God. You just missed it. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, this half hour, we're going to spend the whole half hour talking about, um, I think, uh, you know, we, we mentioned, it, in all seriousness, in the last half hour, we mentioned that, um, of course, as human beings, we we have sort of a a conceit, uh, you know, as a as a as a people, as a as a body, as human beings, that we we can define God, and we have a need to do it too. We have kind of a uh, of a um, of a overarching sort of um, need to have a relationship with 
with this with this infinite with this with which with with that which is beyond us and i think the the interesting thing that we came to is that that the the only way that we can possibly hope to have a relationship with the infinite is through the heart yet we constantly and i'll just say that for all of us we constantly want to do it through the head mm-hmm. we we constantly want to conceive God. We have we have this boss quote, which may or may not be up on the website. We have no idea, uh, uh, which basically says that that the the only definition of God is that He's beyond our power to conceive. In other words, we're really begging the question, but it's not really begging the question. We're really saying that um, the the innate nature of a being is limited. We are not infinite. We, we all know that. Uh, and the only uh, vehicle by which we can touch each other in relationship is through the heart. And the only vehicle by which we can even hope to have a relationship with, with that which is infinite is, again, through the heart. But we, gosh darn it, we really, really, really want it to be in the head. We want to put ourselves in the position of knowing everything that can be known all the time. It, yeah. it, it's a it's, control. It's a control thing. Mm-hmm. It's, it's recognizing that um, the concept, which is a mental exercise, mental expression of who we are, that mental side wants to be able to conceptualize. But it's understanding that those concepts are limited to your ability to think. (laughs) Or not. (laughs) Well, mostly you, you feel that you are well within the realm of putting together this image of God in your head. And no one else is going to tell me the way that image should run. And if you happen to be part of a uh, religious group, then God is strictly defined. There are very few um, that I can see that have no real boundaries. Some, some some, Some of the religious groups say yes. Our God is infinite, but then proceed to tell you how it should be done. Right. And you sit there and you go, no. Well, it gives us endlessly things to argue about. Um, but I, I want to go back to what you said right at the, at the bottom of the last half hour, uh, which is that we could turn this whole thing around, and we can turn this around if we just take the word con- conceive and turn it into conception. Um, because once you talk about conception, and we'll talk about it in, in the framework of germination, you know, a seed is planted, and then you have to allow, you, you have to take yourself back. You may be the planter of the seed. You may have uh, watered it and given it soil and light and, and everything it needed, but yet... That which comes from the seed is not under your control. Mm-hmm. It will have its own independent life. And a real relationship is also like that. You, you, you go into relationship with another. The relationship is not something that you control. The relationship is not something that either of you, if there are, a relationship requires at least two, um, either of the of the beings in the relationship do not control. The relationship is a third thing that grows, that involves both of the people or both of the of the the things that are in relationship that started it. But yet it it is not the it is not you. It is not the other. It is something else. What you're there for is to nurture the seed. Your power, if you take the quote that we were. We're uh, just talking about by Alan Rand. The power is the ability to receive 
that seed and allow conception and then nurturance so that it can grow right. and thrive. And the only way something thrives is if you allow it to grow. And feed it, as you said. Uh, a relationship between between people must be allowed to grow. Mm-hmm. Uh, what was the, the central... Um, the 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 central tenet of a relationship is that it will change. Yes. Now, people go, change is bad. Change can be bad. It can also be good because your initial relationship with anybody is usually not the one that you will have a year from now or ten years from now or or, or you know over time, your relationship should grow. And on a proper, not a proper, but a, a relationship which which grows is is important. Um, when you first met, you, you know, someone who who you now consider to be indispensable to your life, you know, your your soulmate. When you first met, there was probably, a, let's say, a, a, an affinity, but it but if the relationship was one hundred percent what it was then that it is today that 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 you know 50 years have gone by and the relationship is exactly the same that relationship it hasn't grown therefore it's died you know if if your relationship is static it's not a relationship we know that so um but that's an interesting thought because most people have that type of relationship with god a, a very static, formulaic, and they don't want it to change because they now I know who God is. He's he, it's this and this and this, and you, they're comfortable. You, you've so got it. That's exactly right. You, say that again. That was perfect. <laughs> okay. When it comes to a relationship with God, people want it to be static. They don't want anything to change. They feel that if they know what they're supposed to do, this is what they're going to get from God. What to expect, what he or she expects, how this is supposed to run. And nothing changes, which means it's it's not a living and breathing thing. It's very dry. And there is no love, because love has got to grow in a relationship. It grows in many different ways, a myriad of ways. And it's got to be unique for each and every person. But if it's static, then there is no life there. It, it, there's three incredibly important things right there. Let's just talk about relationships between people because people understand them better. If your relationship with, with, with another person is static, it's dead. If your relationship with another person is controlled because you don't want it to change ever. It is, by definition, not a relationship anymore. It's a power struggle. People say, well, uh, I never want, you know, I, I love this moment, this moment with this person. It's perfect. And I never want it to change. And that right away is, is poison to the real relationship because yes this moment may be perfect but you are going to change the other person is going to change it's the the inevitable so at the mental perfect it's dead it's 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 no longer being it's in the past instantly the the perfect moment doesn't exist because the perfect moment is in the past always the 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 being the heart does two things it allows for change it it realizes that, that the relationship changes and grows constantly and that it's not limited if mm-hmm. you do it correctly by by space by time by death by anything that change accepted and and you said this before 
for conception and for growth, you have to accept the seed and you have to realize the seed is going to change, that the, the, the relationship is going to change and grow. That's between people, mm-hmm. which, which we can kind of figure out, you know. But when we talk about the infinite, it's, it's a level up <laughs> of, relation, of relationship. But yet it's the same thing. You have to allow for the growth. And, and you say, well, God never changes. Right, but you are changing. You are changing all the time. And, and the relationship will be changing. So your relationship with God, besides the fact that God never changes, doesn't matter. Your relationship changes, grows, matures, becomes something greater and greater, greater than, than, you, than you could ever contain. It's interesting, too, because um, we always look at, if you look at it uh, in Christianity, the Word, which is a capital W, O-R-D, was always equated with seed. The concept of the Word something sacred, a sacred uh, concept planted into you, your heart. Mm. And whenever that is planted there, it is to be nurtured, it's protected, so that it can grow. In other words, these concepts which are based in love and loving, the idea is unconditional love. Any concept that is addressing unconditional love becomes planted in you. And it's not planted in your mental thinking, nor is it planted in how you feel about it. It's planted in the soil of the heart Mm. so that that seed is allowed to grow into a a larger form, an expanded form of what love is. And it's a process. Understanding that you may have only a kernel, a small kernel of love in you. Mm. Very little. Mm. And you can't really share it. You gotta gotta let it germinate. <laughs> and we all know it needs a lot of fertilizer. Oh, lots. Lots. <laughs> Usually, the fertilizer comes in in you living and interacting with a lot of things in your life, but that seed begins to to germinate, throws the shell off, allowed to grow, mm. and what emerges of it is far greater than anything that you thought it could be. Right. Looking at relationship, this relationship that started out as kernel of love has blossomed into something that is strong and vibrant and thriving and growing and eventually producing expressions independent expressions of love right. children hopefully well but let I me mean, you see so there's some wonderful things that that statement is wonderful because we talked about absolutes and mm-hmm. mental the mental loves absolutes but absolutes are statics mm-hmm. A- absolutes don't move and don't change because they're absolutes you can have one is one and zero is zero and those are absolutes but there's no life in them because no. they because they're absolutes mm-hmm. um Relationships live, they grow, or they die. Right. We talk about relationships in terms of living things because they are. We never mm-hmm. talk about them in terms of, of absolutes. And, and relationships, like living things, are independent of where they began. There was a seed, a kernel. Um, it was planted and nurtured. And between the, the two, at least, in the relationship, both contributed 
to to grow the relationship. But then the relationship goes beyond. The, the, both parties who began the relationship will change, will die, will disappear. But the relationship continues. The the amazing thing about um, non absolutes is that they grow and change. They can die. They can be born. They can they can become independent. They can go on. So, you know, we in this universe of static things that are absolute ones and zeros are not absolutes. We are things that begin and that grow and change and die. And yet, the amazing thing is that we can have relationships with that which never dies. And that in between our two ephemeral selves, at least two, uh, we can grow something which is eternal because the relationship doesn't change. The relationship that you grow today it will be different tomorrow and the next day. And regardless of of what you can do today for it and tomorrow for it and the next day for it, it will be. Like, we also talk about relationships as beings. They, 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 relationships be. They, they are, they are not um, static. They, no. they live. Yes. So, so this, yes, this is is taking this concept, this idea that we just talked about in the God is a, a being. And there's a very important part of this quote. God is a being, a being, not a a thinging. <laughs> <laughs> and and when we say definition, we're trying to put them in a box. What are definitions? But little boxes. Definitions by by definition are absolutes. They're 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 they define something. They encapsulate something. They say this is this. A one is a one. But we can't do that with that. We have to accept a seed and then grow. Let's say the word. But let's say you know the the longing for relationship with that which is beyond all of us is in us. That's the seed. Then you 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 add fertilizer. <laughs> you, add, <laughs> you add water. You add sunlight. You add something. You 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 yeah. allow the seed to germinate and becomes a relationship. And that relationship grows all throughout um all throughout the time that you be with it and it goes on. Um this 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 quote is very pithy because within its sort of its surface says, well, you know, we can't define God, so don't so, so don't worry about it. Well, no, it really when you take it apart a little bit, is saying we can't define God, and that's correct and good, and we should we should not try to define it. We have to conceive and and grow with it, uh, allow it in, nurture it. And and we can talk about the same thing with people. Mm -hmm. You you don't mm -hmm. um, you don't put people in boxes. Bad idea. Stop it. Stop putting people in boxes. Right out. Not even funny. Uh, you oh, have yeah. to you have to you have to let your people go. Wait a minute. <laughs> 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 let my people go. You have to you have to let your people go and not try to put them in boxes. Any, it, just as you never want to be in a box where you feel like everyone, you know, everything about you is known and you can't grow and and move, it's death. You you must give the same um, freedom to all those around you. And then, when you want to have a relationship, you have to hold out the seed of that relationship and find someone who will provide a nurturing ground or the other way find someone who has a seed that you want to nurture you want to provide the nurturing ground and then grow it together and and let the relationship become something greater and independent of both of you that's the, that's the thing that's that's really life i think if you go into the biological way of looking at what conceive is you have a contribution from one and a contribution of another that come together and form something completely new. Yes. That is a seed. 
Yes. And then it needs to be nurtured. Yes. Be brought into a fullness of of being. Relationships are like children. And it's much the same way that they must be allowed to grow mm-hmm. and change as you change. And your, 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 your relationship requires lots of effort. Yes. And it would be, provides a lot of rewards. Yes. Far greater than the effort given, but you, you don't know that. You have to, you have to allow it. Mm-hmm. Well, you have to be willing and you also have to be committed. Yes, and 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 just in the same way, person to person, person to to an, an infinite person, we personify God because not because we want to put him in a box or her, them. You know, we personify God and say him and her and all this stuff. But we want to have relationship with God, and relationship with God comes from the seed which is within us. Mm -hmm. But there's contributions from both sides. Infinite contributes Mm -hmm. to the finite and the relationship grows. You have to be open to the infinite but yet you also have to bring something back to the infinite. It's not a one-way street relationship Mm -hmm. between people and it's not a one-way street relationship between you and the infinite. So we can't Mentally, box in God. Just like we can't box in people. Stop boxing in people. But yet, we can be in relationship with people, and we can be in relationship with, with, with that which we can never understand or, or encapsulate. But yet, we can have a relationship. And this, which, that's cool. Well, I think that's interesting, too, because the person that you're in relationship, you are forever discovering something new about them. Who said that you know everything about the person that is your significant other? Nor should you expect to. But some, many, many people expect that. They expect that, okay, this is, this is what I, I know about this person, so therefore we'll be in relationship, and oh yeah, sure, things will change, but when they actually change and they haven't really taken into account that life happens, yeah. That's when the true test is. Have you allowed your relationship to grow? Have you nurtured it so it has a life of its own? Right. And in a relationship, you've got to give into it. You're 110%. Sometimes because, more. Because you know that it's far more than yourself singularly. It, it, very much, very true. So, so to to put a to kind of wrap this up and put a bow on it, we're not going to define God. We're going to leave that up to you. But we're going to try and have a relationship with each other, and practice on that relationship. Let it grow and have a relationship with the infinite, and the rewards are great for both. The rewards of a of a growing relationship with another go far beyond our physical existence, and just as they do with growing relationship with the infinite. And, and this, this is why we are down here, yeah. to have the experience of love relationship. And I believe we have reached the end of our hour. I love you. <laughs> and I love you. <laughs> and, and I'm Michael Lyons. And I'm Margaret. And thank you for listening.